Today's lecture is on superposition and the AC node voltage and mesh current methods. This is section 7.8 and 7.9 in the reading. At the conclusion of today's lecture, students should be able to apply the principle of superposition to solve a circuit for unknown voltages and currents, as well as to apply the mesh current and node voltage methods to AC circuits, as well as circuits with supernodes and supermeshes. Okay, let's look at the first example. For the following circuit, use superposition to find the sinusoidal steady state expression Ix of t. The first thing you should notice is that we have two sources here, a voltage source sine 2t and a voltage source sine 10t. What's important to note here is that the only way to solve this problem is to use superposition because the left source has a frequency of 2 radians per second and the right source has a frequency of 10 radians per second. So the first thing we're going to do is to draw the circuit once with the sine 2t on and once with the sine 10t on it. And because they have two different frequencies, the impedance will actually change for both. So on the left, we're going to have omega equals two radians per second. The voltage source is one with an angle of negative 90 degrees in the units of volts. Notice this is a sine, so to convert it to a cosine, we shift by negative 90 degrees. And the inductor would be J2 ohms. The capacitor is negative J over two ohms and the current through the capacitor is Ix. And we have a one ohm resistor and the voltage source on the right is a short circuit. Then on the other side, we have omega equals 10 radians per second. So we short out the left voltage source. We have the inductor the capacitor, the resistor again, and the right voltage source is also one with an angle of negative 90 degrees. The units are volts. The resistor is one ohm, and now the inductor is J10 ohms, and the capacitor is negative J over 10 ohms, and the current through it would be Ix. So now, to solve these problems, we're going to use KCL. Let's label the nodes. This node here will be Vx prime, and this will be ground, which makes the first current Ix prime. Here, this node will be Vx double prime, and the current will be Ix double prime. So the equation on the left using KCL would be Vx prime minus one with an angle of negative 90 degrees divided by J2 plus Vx prime divided by negative J over two plus Vx prime over one equals zero. The KCL equation on the right would be Vx double prime over J10 plus Vx double prime over negative J over 10, plus Vx double prime minus one with an angle of negative 90 degrees, divided by one, and that equals zero. So you have one equation and one unknown. So Vx prime is equal to 277.35 with an angle of 123, 0.7 degrees and the units are millivolts and Vx double prime is equal to 100.5 with an angle of negative 174.2 degrees and the units are millivolts and Ix prime is equal to Vx prime divided by negative J over 2 so Ix prime is 554.7 with an angle of negative 146.3 degrees, and that's milliamps. And Ix double prime is equal to one with an angle of negative 84.23 degrees milliamps. It's important to understand that since we found these values at two different frequencies, 
Unlike other superposition problems in the DC circuit realm, you cannot simply add these two values together because they just don't make sense. One of them was that omega equals two radians per second. The other one is, was that omega equals 10 radians per second. So there's only one correct way to write the answer, and it's in the sine total steady state where you're going to have a cosine at two radians per second for the first ix term and a cosine at 10 radians per second for the second ix term. So the final answer would be 554.7 cosine of 2t minus 146.3 degrees plus 1000 cosine of 10t minus 84 point two three degrees and the units are milliamps. So now let's try some examples that include a super node and a current source in an outer branch. So in the following circuit we're going to use the no voltage method to find the node voltages and use the mesh current method to find the mesh currents. Note that V1 is already labeled on our circuit so we need to label the ground and also notice that we have a voltage source here that is not connected to the reference node or ground. So this creates a super node. So KVL at the super node is V1 minus V2 is equal to 20 with an angle of 60 degrees. KCL at the super node is V1 minus 15 with an angle of zero degrees divided by four plus V1 over J4, plus V2 over negative J equals five with an angle of 15 degrees, and the units are amps. So now we have two equations and two unknowns. So if we solve for V1, V1 is equal to 18 with an angle of 56 degrees, and the units are volts, and V2 is equal to 2.31, with an angle of negative 89 degrees, and the units are volts. So now let's do the mesh current method, and we're going to label the currents, I1 and I2, and that last mesh has a counterclockwise current of five with an angle of 15 degrees. So first, we'll do KVL at mesh one. KVL at mesh one is four, I1 plus J4 times I1 minus I2, and this equals 15 with an angle of zero degrees. Now, KVL at mesh two, we're going to have 20 We're going to have 20 with an angle of 60 degrees minus J times I2 plus five with an angle of 15 degrees plus J4 times I2 minus I1 and that equals zero. So we have two equations and two unknowns. So I1 is equal to 3.95 with an angle of negative 72 degrees and the units are amps. And I2 is equal to 2.8 with an angle of negative 154 degrees and the units are amps. This concludes today's lecture on demonstrating how to do superposition, the node voltage and mesh current method on AC circuit.